Hi everyone, today I'm going to take you through the cell cycle and mitosis section for HQA A-level biology, which is part of the cells unit. Also, I'll be going through a few exam style questions and their mark schemes. And as always, I'll be putting in the comment section timestamps so you can skip to the relevant sections that you want to revise from. So let's get started with the video. So what is a cell cycle? The cell cycle is a series of steps or stages which goes around in the cycle that a cell normally goes through. The cell cycle is divided into four stages. Mitosis, G1, S phase and G2. I think here I'm going to put arrows just to signify that it is a cycle. So DNA replication takes place in S phase and M it represents mitosis. Now G1 and G2 are called GAP1 and GAP2. The function of these stages of the cell cycle will become clearer as we go on. Now note that S phase G2 and G1 are all part of interphase which is the stage that cells spend most of their cycle in. So mitosis doesn't actually make a very large part of the cell cycle. Next thing that is really important to know is that mitosis is a nuclear division. It is not a cell division because division of the cell is called cytokinesis. So what happens in mitosis? Mitosis is when the nucleus divides and cytokinesis occurs to produce two genetically identical daughter cells. The key thing here is two genetically identical cells. Now here I've written division of the nucleus is mitosis and division of the cell is cytokinesis. Please don't get confused between the two. So as you can see here, one parent cell has divided into two genetically identical daughter cells. So what are the stages? Stage one, which is actually not technically part of mitosis, but is an important part of the cell cycle is interphase. Now, as we said earlier, interphase is split, split up into three parts. G1, which stands for gap one. Don't get confused, the G does not stand for growth. So in G1, proteins are synthesized and the cell grows larger. In S phase, DNA replication occurs. And in G2, there is additional growth. And as you can see here, this is a optical microscope image of interphase. So obviously chromosomes are not yet visible. Next stage is prophase. In prophase, chromosomes condense and become visible. At the end of prophase, they are visible as two chromatids joined at the center by a centromere. Chromatids are the singular arms. So this would be one chromatid and this would be the other chromatid. Now, the middle is called the centromere, which will become more important when we talk about anaphase. Also, the nuclear envelope breaks down, which allows the nucleus to divide later on. And the mitotic spindle forms which is the thing that pulls the chromatids to opposite poles of the cell in anaphase. And here we have an optical microscope image of prophase. As you can see, the dark parts show the chromosomes as they are more condensed. The next stage is metaphase. Metaphase is when chromosomes line up at the equator of the cell. The key term here is equator. At A level, you can't put the middle of the cell, you have to put equator to get marks in the exam. Also, the mitotic spindle attaches to the centromere as the spindle pulls apart the chromatids at the centromere. As you can see, this is demonstrated by this diagram. As you can see, the chromosomes are lined up at the middle with the mitotic spindles attached to the centromere. The next stage is anaphase. Anaphase is when Sister chromatids separate at the centromere and are pulled to opposite poles of the cell by the mitotic spindle. Now the key term here is sister chromatids. Now the term sister here means the chromatids, two chromatids that make up one chromosome. 
For they are pulled to opposite poles or opposite sides of the cell by the spindle, which contracts to allow this. The final stage is telophase. Telophase is when the spindle disappears as it is no longer needed and the nuclear envelope are reformed. So you have two nuclei. Chromosomes start to decondense and then cytokinesis occurs, which is when the cell divides. So as you can see here, cytokinesis is occurring. But what happens if mitosis goes wrong or if the cell cycle goes wrong? Mutations in various genes can, can cause uncontrolled cell division or errors in the cell cycle, leading to the formation of tumours and of cancers. Many cancer treatments are directed at controlling the rate of cell division. Now you will learn more about cancer and tumour formation in the A2 content. However, most prokaryotes, such as bacteria, do not undergo mitosis. They undergo a process called binary fission instead. This, this is because mitosis is a nuclear division and prokaryotic cells do not have a nucleus, as a nucleus is a membrane-bound organelle. Now, in binary fission, the circular DNA, which is what prokaryotes have, and plasmids, which are little extra pieces of DNA, are replicated, just like in interphase. The next stage is that the cytoplasm divides, which is cytokinesis. But the thing that is different is that the daughter cells have a single copy of circular DNA. However, each daughter cell have variable plasmid copy numbers, as it is important that this is regulated. So as you can see here, the parent cell has three plasmids. But when it has divided into two daughter cells by binary fission, one daughter cell has two plasmids and one has just one. So that is it for the content. Now we can go on to some um, questions. Could you highlight up now? So let's look at the first question. A student investigated mitosis in the form in the tissue from an onion root tip. The student prepared a temporary mount of the onion tissue on a glass side. Don't get confused by the term temporary mount. This basically just means a microscope slide. She covered the tissue with a cover slip. She is then given the following instruction. Push down hard on the cover slip, but do not push the cover slip sideways. Explain why she was given this instruction. As this is an explain question, you need to explain why something has been said or why something is happening. Now, she, if you think about it, you need to push down hard because you need to make the specimen thin so that the light beam can penetrate the specimen so that an image can be seen. So I've wrote here, pushing down squash the specimen so it makes it thin. But she was given the instruction, do not push the cover slip sideways as this could break open the chromosome so that you will not be able to see mitosis as mitosis is observable through the behaviour of chromosomes. So I've written here, not pushing the cover slip sideways ensures the chromosomes are not broken open. So if we look at the mark scheme, first marking point, push hard so spread or squash the tissue, which we wrote. The second marking point, not pushing sideways means avoiding rolling the cells together or breaking the chromosomes. It doesn't matter which one of these you put, you still got the marks. It says here neutral to see cells clearly, so the examiner doesn't really like it if you write that as it is not clear enough what you're writing about. So let's go on to the next question. The image below shows one cell the student saw in the onion tissue. The student concluded that the cell in the image was in the anaphase stage of mitosis. Was she correct? Give two reasons for your answer. Now, as this is a give question, you don't really need to write in much detail to get the marks. So if we recall from a few minutes ago, anaphase is when the chromosomes or the chromatids even are pulled to opposite poles of the cell. So we can put here that 
yes it is anaphase because the chromosomes are at opposite poles of the cell or are being pulled to opposite poles of the cell as you can see by the image. Now this question can actually be a bit tricky as the images are often not very clear but also we can note that the chromosomes as you can see in the image are actually v-shaped or the chromatids even showing that the sister chromatids have been pulled apart at their centromere. So if you look at the mark scheme, you don't get marks for putting no or yes, so even if you put no, you don't get penalised. So the first marking point, the chromosomes or the chromatids are in two groups at the poles of the spindle or at the ends of the spindle. So we can get that mark. It's actually better if you specify the poles of the spindle instead of poles of the cell. And it says, do not accept ends of the cell, because that is not specific enough for A level. So if we look at the second marking point, it says the V shape shows that the sister chromatids, you don't have to put the term sister, but it is better if you do, have been pulled apart at their centromeres, or that the centromeres of the sister chromatids have been pulled apart, so we can get that second mark. So let's get on to the next question. This is a maths question, question which is everyone's favourite. The student counted the number of cells she observed in each stage of mitosis. Of the 200 cells she counted, only 6 were in anaphase. One cell cycle of onion root tissue takes 16 hours. Calculate how many minutes these spells, cells even spend in anaphase. Show your work in. So, as it says, this says, show your work in. It often means that like one of the marks comes from your working out rather than both coming from the answer. So the first thing that you would want to do is figure out the proportion of cells that were in anaphase. So to do that we divide 6 by 200 to get the proportion which is 0 0.03 or 3%. Now the next thing we can look at is the fact that one cell cycle of onion root tissue takes 16 hours, however the units that the answer is looking for is minutes. So we need to figure out how many minutes are in 16 hours. To do that we need to multiply 16 by 60 and we get 960 minutes. Now to figure out how many minutes these cells spend in anaphase, we need to multiply the minutes, so 960 minutes, by the proportion of cells in anaphase. So we do 960 times 0.03 and we get 28.8 minutes. So if we look at the mark scheme, you can either put 28.8 or you can round it up to 29. So if you just put the correct answer but you don't do any work now, you actually do get both marks. So we can get both marks here. However, it says here, if the answer is incorrect, allow 6 divided by 200 times 960, which is the sum that you need to do to get the right answer. And that would get you one mark, even if you wrote the wrong answer in the answer box. So if we get on to the next question, this is another image question. The figure below shows some cells from an onion root tip at different stages of the cell cycle. Place stages A to E in the correct order, start with stage D. As it starts with stage D, we can conclude that stage D is interphase. And as I said earlier, the next stage in the cell cycle is mitosis, and the first stage of mitosis is prophase. Now if we look at these images, we can start to rule out some of them. So it can't be A, as you can see here, um, cytokinesis is occurring, so that obviously isn't prophase. If we look at B, the chromosomes are lined up at the middle of the cell, so that isn't prophase. If we look at E, that's actually the same image as was used a couple of questions ago. So that can't be prophase. So the only one left is C. As you can see, the chromosomes are condensed as the images are dark. So C is the next one. So the next stage in mitosis is metaphase. And we have already said that B is metaphase as the chromosomes 
in the image here are lined up in the middle of the cell or the equator of the cell. That term is key, the equator. The next stage, obviously, E, because that is anaphase, as you can see, the chromatids are being pulled to opposite poles of the cell and the chromatids are reshaped, showing they are being pulled apart at the centromere by the spindle. And the only one we have left is A, which shows telophase. And the mark scheme here it shows D in brackets, C, B, E, A, so we get the mark. Now, if you get one part of the question wrong, so if you mix up the letters, you don't get any marks. Now, here is the last question. To obtain these images, the onion root tip was cut off, strained and put on a microscope slide. A cover slip was placed on top. The root tip was then firmly squashed and viewed under an optical microscope. So we can highlight optical microscope. Complete the table given below to give one reason why each of these steps was necessary. So let's look at the first step here, taking cells from the root tip. Now if you think about it, the root tip is the part that is mostly exposed to the elements, so is more likely to be damaged. So to repair the damage, mitosis must occur. So we can write mitosis occurs the most in this region. So if we look at the next step, firmly squashing the root tip. This makes a specimen thin so the light can penetrate through the specimen so it can be seen in the image. So we can write to make the tissue more thin. Look at the mark scheme. So the first point here, region where mitosis or cell division occurs. And the next one to allow light through or to make tissue layer thin. Right, I think that is it for all I want to say. Um, please comment below if you have any questions and I'll see you in the next video.